How's it going? So, it's no secret that I'm a big old nerd. Uh, I've been playing with Home Assistant for home automation for quite a while now, and I really like it. It's 2023, I shouldn't have to turn my own lights on and off, but the problem that I still have... I still have to open and close my blinds manually, like a caveman. They do sell blinds that can be co- Go away, Stella. Say hi, Stella. Clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. And while they do sell blinds that will open and close automatically, they're freaking uggo. Ew. So today, I'm gonna take my existing blinds in here and in here and make them automagic. Let's do it. So I'm starting with these ones because the other one I have kind of a plan for. So, you know, that's boring. We're gonna try and figure out how I'm gonna make these ones work. Oh, and I'm trying to dismantle them with the blinds closed so the shot doesn't look bad, so, uh, you're welcome. That wasn't so bad. Oh man, I probably shouldn't have thrown that. So these blinds work in a way that you can just push and pull them up and down. I have no idea how they do that, but I assume it's got something to do with this magic box. Well, I guess let's get into this. Look at that, I popped one of the clips off and this thing's kinda spring loaded from this string here. Part of me is thinking that this string is what holds the blinds up. Hmm, we might ruin these $100 blinds, it's okay. Anything for a YouTube video. Why does everything have to be built with these stupid plastic clips? I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Yeah, I think I gotta remove this bar first. How do? Kinda seems this whole thing is held together by little plastic clips. Oh yeah, got them. And here goes this. Got it out. Will I ever get it back in? That's the question. Anyway, we can more easily access this magic box now. So we've got these bobbins here that our string runs into, and it's kind of cool. The bobbins are attached to gears that are geared to these two springs. So that, whoa! Spring down. Where the hell did it go? Well, now I have to automate this thing. I think I broke it. All right, I'm taking over now. I don't know what was up with me that day, but I was like an ADHD kid in a candy store. <laughs> Let me explain what I figured out here. We've got two bobbins and two spools for springs all geared together. The bobbins wind the string up on them as the blinds go up. When the blinds are pulled down, one spring gets transferred to the other and that effectively holds energy and they're perfectly balanced. So when you push the blinds up, it's like pushing nothing up. The spring does the work for you. Pretty cool. This thing is complex, man. This needs to be pulled this way. This needs to be pulled this way. And same thing on this side. We got two different strings that need to be pulled two different ways. And, you know, I don't know what strings go into what bobbin. I lost all sorts of little tiny pulleys and shafts like this. It's not looking good over here in uh, Cranktown. I think I need to sit and angrily stare at this a little bit longer to figure out what I'm doing. All right, I'm back. One cut for you, one day for me. This is the game plan. I've got this old stepper motor with a gearbox. This already has a little pinion gear on it. So I designed these gears to mesh with this. This will attach right here, turning this gear. I only have three here, I was just testing, but we'll have four gears with spools on them that will all get turned by this stepper. This whole assembly is just gonna mount above the blinds on the wall. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little jank, but uh, kind of hard balancing variables here. And then either we leave the gearbox out for all to see, which might be kind of cool, or I'll build a wooden cover for it. But this ain't about that, this is about this. What? So, I've gone right ahead and cut out some parts on the laser, and the plasma cutter, and the 3D printer. Well, I, I didn't cut them on the 3D printer, I did. You get it. We're using all the CNC machines for this one. So first things first, these parts go together like so. This right here is where the motor will mount. So, we can't have a bolt head sticking out there. So I've cut the head off of a bolt. 
And that will just get welded in place and ground down. The rest can just be welded in place. While that's cooling down, let's address our gears. We're gonna take our Dell ring gears and our 3D printed part and put them together like this to make a bit of a pulley. These are gonna get glued, screwed, and tattooed together just like that. Alrighty, it's time for assembly. So, each of these posts gets a spacer. Then, we can install our gear pulleys. Look at that, those mesh pretty nice. Then, we can install our motor. Like so. Now, the motor can spin all of these, and we got a tiny bit of mechanical advantage. Not much, but I don't think we need it because this gives a lot of mechanical advantage, in my experience. Beauty! Last thing we need is a way to mount this. And I'm just going to mount it to the big horizontal piece at the top of the framing. It's not a joist. It's like a horizontal stud. I don't know. So, we got holes right at the top. And I'm just going to weld this angle iron onto here. Just like that. Wow! Let's go mount this thing and give her a test. Alright, I'm not quite sure where the best place to put this is. We're gonna wing it. See what I'm talking about? Not quite a joist and not quite a stud. Oh, that's cool. Now I gotta painstakingly tie these little guys into our pulleys somehow. Wish me luck. Alrighty. As you can see, or maybe can't see because it's kind of crammed in there, I got all of those hooked up to the, their respective pulleys. And I've taken the stepper and hooked it up to my little CNC computer for now. And check it out, guys. Oh, yeah! So look at that! Pretty neat! And just like that, I've ruined the lighting for this shot. Pretty cool, huh? Now, it is slow, but... I don't care how slow it is if I'm not the one doing it. I'm cool with this. Now, to finish this guy up, we'll stick a little limit switch right here. Hot glue. And that brings us to the electronics. This whole thing's gonna be controlled using an ESP32. We'll throw a stepper driver on there to control the stepper motor and our home switch. The ESP32 will be connected to my home network and we'll communicate with it using MQTT. MQTT is a messaging protocol used for machine to machine communication. We subscribe the ESP32 to the topic of LR blinds and send it packets from Home Assistant. When it receives a one, the blinds go down for a set amount of step. When it receives a two, the blinds go up until they hit the home switch. For all intents and purposes, it's done. Now, I can so conveniently go into Home Assistant and run a script and the blinds will go up. Obviously, I gotta make a nice button on my dashboard for this and put it in automation so I don't even have to think about it, but it works. Um, I guess I'm gonna try and not move so I can speed this up. Ta-da! The last thing we need to do to finish this, let's make it purdy. Pine. Well, I can't tell if it's chic and minimalistic or um, lazy. Either way, it'll do. Well, that worked out kind of all right. Now my next Cranktown Smart Blind, I'm pretty stoked about. We're gonna use this one inch copper pipe as well as these 3D printed parts, those guys, a couple pulleys, and a timing bell. Let's do this. This part is going to hold an idler pulley. I can stick it in there and shove a shaft through. I need a little persuasion here. Beautiful. Now I can take a quarter inch bolt and stick it in the back end. Not like that. Again, it may need a little persuasion. Nice! Nothing a bit of five-minute epoxy can't fix, right? 
Perfect. Now then we can drill a hole in a copper cap. And this will fit inside of that. And we'll use it to tension the belt with a wing nut that can just tighten this thing up. Now I can sweat a male adapter onto the pipe using electrical solder, because I'm a bona fide professional. Now I'm gonna eyeball out a loop of timing belt that can stretch across this entire pipe, which is almost the whole roll. I'll cut it and just cross my little fingies that I got that right. And that brings us to the timing belt clampy bits. So we got two of these guys. And these holes will get magnets epoxied into them. Like so. I'm gonna try my darndest to film this, but I, no guarantees, guys. To tie our two ends together, they go like that. Then I have this 3D printed part that I pressed a couple M3 nuts in, and those go there. And then I have this 3D printed part that goes on top. I did not get that shot whatsoever, but just like that, that was hard. My big stupid gorilla hands aren't meant for these tiny little parts. I'll put a little bit of epoxy in here just to, you know, help out a bit. And then on our magnet parts, this fits over this and this slot fits over our timing belt. And it all goes together like, like so. Beauty! I mean, it's kind of gross, but it's working beautifully. So this piece has more or less dried. Now we need to position it so it is in the middle of our loop of timing belt. All right, so now with this place in mind, I'm gonna put another one of these clamps on the free moving side of the belt right next to this guy. Now I'm gonna epoxy this guy on just, oh, just like this. So now we've got two little guys that get pulled in two separate directions at the same time by the timing belt. See where I'm going with this? Eh? Here we have a piece of wood. Here we have a piece of wood with a tapped hole. That was the easiest hole I've ever tapped. I, I gotta work with wood more. Piece of wood can be threaded onto our male adapter, like so. And onto that, we can put a stepper mount and a stepper. And lastly, our motor gets a timing pulley. And that's about that. These are all dried up and you can see, pull one, they come apart. Pull the other, they go together. I've gone right ahead and stuck our idler on there. Now, I don't know where my bailing wire is, so I'm gonna shove some solder <laughs> through the pipe until it gets to the other end. Now we can take the other end of our timing belt and tie it to our fish tape and start pulling it through. This is me hoping that it's just getting caught on a burr. I don't know how I'm gonna get this out if it's too tight like that. Oh yeah, it was just a burr. Lastly, we gotta stuff our little idler in, but before getting it too far, gotta put the cap on. And then it just gets a wing nut, and we can just pop that guy on there. And now, we really hope that I measured everything right. So we're, we're just about out here. All right, that's on there. Now I'm gonna tighten up the idler. Whoa. Okay. Feels like it got vaguely tight. Yeah. This is looking good, guys. I got these two nuts stuck on the magnets. Turn the motor one way, they go together. Turn it the other way, they go apart. It's perfect. Last thing we gotta do to finish this thing is slip some magnets in the curtains. So, first, I'm gonna try the no sew method because I will happily avoid sewing if I can. Got it put in place. Now all we gotta do is the electronics. This whole thing's gonna be controlled using an ESP32. Wait a minute. We already saw this. The electronics for this portion are exactly the same as the last one. So let's just get through this real quick. Here we have our uh, closed curtains. And with a quick little push of a button. Ta-da! Eh? Just what I needed is the soothing sound of CNC to open my blinds and close them. 
Ah, pretty nice. Why is there a wire going into the curtains? Don't worry about it. I really like how these ones turned out. I didn't put a home switch on this version, but I don't think I'll need to. Like worst case scenario, I crash them into each other and they're homed. Yeah, this is pretty fast, pretty sleek and all contained within the pipe. So I'm automating these using Home Assistant. If you're not familiar with Home Assistant, uh, that's quite the rabbit hole. I can't explain it all here in my uh, 20 second recap. But now I've got it all set up so that the curtains all close at sundown and then they open in the morning when I turn the kitchen light on. Cause every morning when I wake up, I go to the kitchen and refill my water jug first. So I think that'll work pretty good. And we don't gotta settle for those super uggo Home Depot blinds. Yay! Yeah, that's what I got for you this week. If you like what you saw, Leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.